Hey, welcome back. So there has been a ton of new large language models coming out almost every day at the moment. It started with the Stanford model, then the Alpaca model, and then there was the Allura versions of Alpaca, and then even this week there's been the Vicuna model, and then there's even been the Bayes models. Now what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how you can take those open source models, download them onto your machine, and then run them using Python. And we're gonna do it using a tool called Llama CPP Python. So if you haven't heard of the Vicuna model already, that's not surprising because it's literally only been released in the last week or so. Now what's cool about it is it's been trained in a very similar fashion to the Stanford Alpaca model. Now, if you don't know how the Stanford Alpaca model works, is essentially it's taken the base Llama model, which was released however many months ago uh, for research purposes only, and then what happened is they fine-tuned the model by taking around 56,000 questions and answers, which they achieved by querying GPT uh, underneath the hood, and then they took that as the fine-tuning training data set, fine-tuned the Llama model, and then that produced the Stanford model. And once that technique was released to the world, then everybody else has essentially been copying that technique, and what they've been doing is using ChatGPT or GPT-4 to create their own fine-tuned data set, and then using the same technique of taking that generated data set, fine-tuning the Llama model underneath to create their new model, and that's exactly what Vicuna has done. But what they've done instead is rather than using the Stanford training data set, what they've done is taken a bunch of uh, online uh, chat GPT sessions and use that as the training data set for Vicuna. And in fact, specifically the training data set they've been using is a thing called ShareGPT. So in fact, if you go to sharegpt.com, you can sort of browse all along that. And basically that's a lot of people who are just sharing their chat GPT conversations on the internet. And of course, that's how Vicuna's done that. They've taken that data set and then used that as the fine tuning set. Now, what is probably pretty cool about this, and uh, you can read the paper yourself on Vicuna. Uh, lmsys.org, um, but essentially what they've done, and I think this is pretty cool, not only have they used the shared GPT data set, but then what they've also done is used GPT-4 to assess the outputs from that. So again, really cool techniques, and again, that's gonna spark a whole lot of other people building their own fine-tuned data sets, et cetera, and, and the world's gonna go crazy, and we're gonna essentially see new models nearly every day. But the good news is you don't necessarily need to be overwhelmed by all of these new models coming out every day, because what I'm gonna show you is how you can run that on your local machine, make it work with Python, and specifically Llama CP, P Python uh, library, and therefore, as long as the underlying model has been uh, trained using the Llama model underneath, then you are gonna be able to just take any of these new models, run it on your machine, and then you're good to go. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is actually download the model. Uh, there is very complicated ways of doing this, but I'm gonna show you the very simple way is you can just download it from Hugging Face. So if you go to huggingface.co, uh, you can see the URL, each idea, uh, forward slash ggml dash vicuna dash 13b dash 4 bit. Um, once you've got that, you can just go to the kind of files and versions. And then what you want to do is download specifically ggml vicuna 13b 4 bit the rev one dot bin. Okay, so now that I've got that downloaded, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that file into a models folder. So I'll just create a folder called models. Uh, I'm going to open that up here. And then from my download folder, I'm just gonna copy the file that I just downloaded and I'm gonna put it in this models folder. Alrighty, so now that we've got that installed, all we really need to do is create our Python program that is gonna access that model. And we're just gonna create a very simple CLI type app, a very simple Python script. Now, the library I'm gonna use is something called llama-cpp python. Good news is that can be installed by just doing a pip install. Paste that in here, and then that's gonna install that on my machine. As you can see, I've already got that installed on my machine, so it's gonna say requirement already satisfied, so you are good. So now that we've done that, we just need to create ourselves a brand new file. So I am gonna create a file called main.py, and then we'll open it up in VS Code. All right, so now that we've installed Llama CPP, what we need to do is obviously import it into uh, our code. So we'll just do from Llama CPP, uh, and we're gonna import Llama. So that is me done my import. Next thing I need to do is load the model. So we will just do that. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna write some print statements at the moment, just so that I can see, uh, 
when we start up our Python script that, that the model gets loaded and see how long it actually takes. So we'll have lmm equals uh, llama. And then I need to specify a model path. So we'll just say model path is gonna be equal to dot models. And then so it's ggml, blah, blah, blah. So we'll just paste that in here. And then of course, now that we've uh, loaded up the model, we will just say print uh, model loaded. Before we even try and interact with the model, what we can do is just make sure that it actually loads. So, and we'll do uh, Python main uh, dot pi. And then as you can see, it's attempting to load the model, ggml vacuna, blah, blah, blah. That all seems to be work. I get this uh, loading model and then my model is loaded. So we're good to go there. So let's just clear that. And then what I wanna do is store the result uh, in this uh, variable called output. And we're gonna do uh, LLM. And then what we need to do is put a question. So I think the question we are gonna put here is we are, uh, it's, it's saying what is the capital of France, but I think we'll go with who is Ada Lovelace. So we'll have this sort of nice computer science-y bit. So that's my question. And again, because the large language models are a uh, text prediction type thing, I'm putting this into a format of question and answer so it can guide it on the type of response that I want. So I'm just gonna put answer here and then it's gonna know from a completion perspective what I'm wanting is uh, a response on, on who Ada Lovelace is. So I need to give it a number of max number of tokens. In this case, I'm gonna mark it as I only want 100 tokens. Over time, we can get uh, more kind of complicated. I can, of course, set the temperature as well if I want. Uh, by default, the temperature is, I think, 0 0.8, but uh, I'm just gonna leave the, the default. I'm not gonna change that. We need to tell it whenever to stop. So essentially, anytime that it sees a kind of a, a, a new question or whether it sees a, a new line, for example, then that's gonna be the point where I'm gonna uh, ask it to stop. So we'll just put that in there. And then finally, at the moment, I just wanna to be able to echo out whatever I write. So I'm just gonna say echo equals true. And then all we need to do is print the output. So I will be super lazy. I'm gonna just do uh, print uh, json.dumps output and then I'm gonna set my end date to two. And then to make that work, I just need to do an import of json at the top here. So with that done, we should be able to find out who Ada Lovelace is. As you can see, the model is loaded there and it's gonna take a little bit of time because it's gonna wait for a complete response. I'm not actually doing any streaming. So if you think about when you're using something like ChatGPT or GPT-4, what actually happens is it is sort of as each answer comes out, it sort of streams out each character. In this particular case, we're just getting the full answer. So you can kind of see here there, question, who is Ada Lovelace? Answer, she's a famous poet, which is a terrible answer. So I'm I'm not convinced the Vicuna model is as good as ChatGPT uh, based on that answer, but you know what? It all depends on the tuning that you've got. And I can, I can put in different questions so I can say, who is uh, Lord Byron? So we'll uh, run that. And there you go, question, who's Lord Byron? And so Lord Byron was a British poet who lived from 1788 to 1824, best known for poetry, blah, 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 blah. Was Ada Lovelace related to Lord Byron? So as you can see, there was a sort of related question on who Ada Lovelace was. She was in fact Lord Byron's daughter and that is absolutely correct. And if we go into ChatGPT, you're gonna see it's got a much, much longer answer, you know, blah, 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 all the details, mother, etc. Whereas Vicuna is coming back with some pretty short answers. But that's cool, right? The the point is that this is a model that's running on my local machine. I don't, I'm not paying any money. I'm not giving money to OpenAI or whatever. And I can fine tune, I could create my own models there. So I think it's quite incredible what they've done. Uh, is it as good as the uh, alpaca model? Again, that's sort of debatable. What we really do want to do now though, is the, you know, just waiting for that response is probably not good enough. What we can do is we of course can stream the responses. So. Let's change our code and see uh, how that will look. So to change that, I'm gonna get rid of this echo equals true, and I'm gonna change that to stream equals true. So that's now gonna tell it I wanna do some streaming. And again, 
I will change this from output to stream because I want to be quite specific. And I'm going to get rid of this uh, print statement. And what we will do is we will put in a nice little uh, for output in stream. And then we can save that. And if I want to, I can just run this again. And as you can see, it's sort of streaming everything out. But it's not really what I'm wanting because it's, it's giving me, yes, she was his daughter, but then I've got all of this sort of uh, nonsense uh, around us. So what I want to do is just pull out the choices text part uh, of this result and then I can get that uh, nice little streamy response. So all I really need to do here is create a new variable called completion fragment and what we're going to do is uh, essentially we're going to do a deep copy of uh, the uh, output We'll just uh, do for output in stream. Once we've got that deep copy, then we can access it as an object and uh, essentially access any JSON uh, variables that we want. And now all I need to do is print completion fragment. I can access the choices element and I wanna hit the uh, zeroth element because remember it was an array and I wanna hit the text attribute for that. So if I just hit save there, and the last thing I need to do, because I'm using copy.deep copy, I can get rid of my import JSON and then I can just do an import copy at the top here. And then if I just run my script again, as you can see, it's loaded the model and it's now gonna start running the model. And there you go. Yes, she was his daughter. And of course, I, you know, and if I wanna just check other things, I can say, uh, what is faster, a horse or a duck? We can save that, we can run it again. And there you go, a duck is faster because a horse cannot swim. Now, if we ask that same question, <laughs> Oh dear, if we ask that same question to ChatGPT, I do wonder what it would come up with. So ChatGPT disagrees. It says the horse is faster than a duck. Horse is one of the fastest land mam mammals. Interesting, right? I'm I'm really not sure Vicuna can really say it's as good as ChatGPT. I, I understand their thinking. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe the higher parameter models. I'm only running the 13 billion parameter model on my machine because it's run locally. But you know, it, it doesn't really matter, right? The 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 fact is you can run a large language model locally on your machine and you can access it with Python using those bindings. And of course, it's not just Python as well. If I want to, I could swap out for the alpaca model, so let me do that really quickly. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paste in the uh, the alpaca model here. You will need to download that, um, and then there's a whole set of things that you need to do with migrations. I may do a video on that at some point, covering the alpaca model, but for just now, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna paste in a version of the model that I know works. So I am just gonna change this. We will we'll paste the model name in here for a second. I'm gonna do a copy paste. I'm gonna comment out the uh, Vicuna model and then we'll put in the alpaca model here. Of course, you could do the same with the Bayes model, etc. The technique will work with, with everything. So now, once that's in there, I can, uh, I can rerun my script. And now, rather than using the Vicuna model, it's now gonna use the alpaca model. And we're gonna find out whether alpaca thinks a horse or a duck is faster. Uh, it's got the same answer. It thinks it's a duck as well. So, you know, maybe that's in the fine tuning kind of text there. Uh, we can ask it who is Ada Lovelace. And we can run that again. So Ada Lovelace, August 10, blah, 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 date of birth, etc. An English writer and inventor. She's best known for her work on Charles Babbage's analytical engine. I think that is a much better answer than what Vicuna was given there. You know, again, it's up to you. Anyway, I think we'll call it a day at that. In another video, what I'll probably do is show you how to take those same models and run them in a web server. We'll use FastAPI as the web server and we'll uh, use things like streaming server events, which will be really cool. And then you can host that up on the cloud. You can put a Docker image around that. You can have your own hosted models. And then of course, in maybe another video, I'll show you how to actually train your own models and then run it again 
on using Alpaca CPP Python. So again, I think it's a very cool project. It's a very cool library. It allows you to bind to uh, the underlying Llama CPP, which is just an amazing project. And, uh, and it means that you can use Python, super simple, and you can run your own uh, large language models on your own machines without paying any cost. And I think it's awesome. Of course, it, it's not as good as ChatGPT. It's not it's certainly not as good as GPT-4, regardless of what it says, but it's pretty cool, right? It's it's a CPU-based model that you can run locally and you can do a lot of stuff with that. Anyway, I hope you have fun with this and I'll catch you on the next video.